afternoon, everyone, and thank you to Emmett as well as the organising committee for the opportunity to present today. So uh, Opthea Limited is a public company. We're listed on the Australian Stock Exchange and we are developing a novel therapy called OPT302 as a combination treatment for the treatment of neovascular AMD as well as diabetic macular edema. A uh, statement reg regarding uh, forward-looking statements as a public company. So the Bedger family is widely recognised as the uh, most important or well-recognised as the most important family that drives both angiogenesis as well as vascular leakage. And the um, approved therapies for the treatment of both AMD as well as diabetic macular edema primarily act by inhibiting selectively VEGF A, which specifically blocks VEGF A signaling through VEGF receptor 1 but importantly blocks VEGF-A-mediated activation of VEGF receptor 2, which is the most um, important receptor that signals for angiogenesis as well as vascular leakage. VEGF-C and VEGF-D are alternative members of the VEGF family, and they also signal through this same receptor, VEGF receptor 2, to drive angiogenesis as well as vascular permeability, and also act through an independent receptor via VEGF receptor 3. Now, due to functional redundancy amongst members of the VEGF family, selective inhibition of VEGF A can lead to compensatory elevations in the levels of VEGF C and VEGF D. And this is now well documented both in preclinical and in vitro published studies, but also in the clinical setting, as you can see here on the right hand side. OPT302 is a potent trap molecule that blocks the activity of both VEGF C and VEGF D through VEGF receptor 2 as well as VEGF receptor 3 and used in combination with a selective VEGF-A inhibitor can mediate a more complete blockade of the VEGF family. And it can also block compensatory mechanisms that may be important for driving the suboptimal uh, clinical response to selective VEGF-A inhibitors. Opthea's first in human clinical trial was a phase 1-2A clinical study in 51 neovascular AMD patients that were either treatment naive or he were heavily pretreated with prior anti-VEGF-A uh, therapy. In this clinical study, we recruited 51 patients that were either treated with OPT302 as a monotherapy or OPT302 in combination with ranibizumab. In this study, each patient was dosed every four weeks for a period of three months with the primary readout at week 12. The safety profile of the drug has been reported before, so I won't um, dwell on it, but as a monotherapy or in combination with ranibizumab, we demonstrated a very clean safety profile. This is a drug that was very well tolerated in combination with ranibizumab as well. We did not reach a maximum tolerated dose and there were no drug-related serious adverse events or systemic adverse events. We did see evidence of biological activity in those patients that were treated with OPT302 monotherapy. Um, the majority of our patients did not require rescue therapy with a VEGF-A inhibitor. And what you see here is in those patients that were not rescued, a mean gain in visual acuity at week 12 to baseline of 5.6 letters. So a very, very clear evidence of a biological signal with OPT302 monotherapy. In the combination group of OPT302 in combination with ranibizumab, a mean gain in visual acuity of 10.8 letters at week 12 compared to baseline was observed in the treatment naive group, and a, four point, a mean BCVA gain of 4.9 letters in the heavily pretreated uh, group of patients at week 12. We saw similar marked reductions in uh, retinal thickness during the time course of the study in both um, the treatment naive as well as the prior treated uh, patients in this study. We also looked at the um, effect of OPT302 ranibizumab therapy on CNV lesion area. As you can see here, we saw a marked reduction in treatment naive patients in CNV lesion size from seven millimetres squared uh, down to two millimetres squared by the week 12 time point. And at week 12, 50% of the treatment naive patients had actually an absent choroidal neovascular membrane on FA. And this is a, a data that was read by an independent reading centre. So on the back of this positive um, safety profile and posit positive signals of clinical efficacy with our drug OPT302, we embarked upon the initiation of a larger randomised controlled study. This is a phase 2B clinical trial which is currently ongoing. It's testing the combination of OPT302 at two dose levels in combination with ranibizumab uh, versus ranibizumab on its own. We uh, expect to recruit 351 patients into this study and each patient will be dosed uh, on a monthly 
basis for six months with the primary readout at week 24. As I said, we're well advanced in our patient recruitment for this trial. It's currently open in sites across 10 countries globally, and we expect primary data analysis from this study in 2020. Now, following the uh, positive signal of eff efficacy that we saw in our initial phase 1-2A clinical trial with this drug, we did diversify our program and also initiated a clinical study in persistent diabetic macular edema patients. And I'll show some new data that we haven't presented before um, in the following slides. But before I move on, I did want to emphasise that our rationale for moving this molecule into investigation in diabetic macular edema is strongly supported by a body of published reports which strongly implicate the VEGF-C signaling pathway in diabetes. And some of those references are here. Needless to say, the VEGF-C um, is upregulated in diabetic retinopathy and in diabetes, and the gene expression is elevated by um, glucose and pro-inflammatory pro cytokines that you see in the diabetic patient. The design of our phase 1b, uh, phase 2a clinical study is shown here. Today I'm going to focus on the phase 1b dose escalation um, and the week 12 endpoint in nine patients that participated in that dose escalation study. So in this study, OPT302 was administered at three dose levels, 0.3 milligrams, 1 milligram or 2 milligrams per IBT injection in combination with a flibercept. Each patient was dosed every four weeks for a total of three injections with the primary readout at week 12, one month after the final injection. Importantly, the uh, patient population that we recruited into this study were persistent DME patients. They had received prior anti-VEGF-A therapy, a minimum of three intravitreal injections with anti-VEGF-A, and they had experienced a, a suboptimal clinical response. Um, the last injection with the anti-VEGF-A um, must have occurred within the six-week time frame. And uh, prior bevacizumab was only allowed if the patient was switched to a uh, flibercept or ranibizumab prior to the study start. So looking at the baseline ocular characteristics in these patients, um, the mean gain, the mean um, Entry BCVA of the nine patients was 65 letters and a mean CST of 430 microns, as you can see here, with a mean history of diabetes of 14 years. And a mean number of prior anti-VEGF-A injections of six injections with the mean time from that previous injection of only 35 days. Again, we saw a favourable safety profile in combination with a flebacept, similar to what we saw in combination with ranibizumab, so no safety concerns with this molecule. This is reflected in this summary of selected um, AEs, as you can see here. There was one patient that did experience hypertension. This was quick to resolve and was determined by the treating investigator not to be related to study signal uh, to the study drugs. And we didn't see any elevations or clinical, clinical concerns with IOP. We did observe a dose response gain in BCVA from baseline to week 12, as you can see here. This is a dose response that was evident across the entire time points of the baseline to week 12 study. And this is summarised here at the week 12 time point in this phase 1b cohort of nine patients. A clear dose response relationship is observed between the 0.3, the 1 and the 2 milligram dosing of OPT302. In the highest dose cohort, we did observe a mean gain in visual acuity at week 12 of 14.3 letters compared to our baseline at week 12. And across the entire cohort, um, we saw a mean gain in visual acuity of 7.7 .7 letters compared to baseline. We saw a similar dose response relationship in the proportion of patients that gained five or more letters at week 12, with 100% of our patients in the top dose cohort um, experiencing a five letter or more gain. Uh, we saw a marked reduction in retinal thickness of over 70 microns at week 12 in the nine patients participating in this uh, persistent DME trial. Now, there was a group of five patients in the, in the phase 1b study that did have bilateral disease. Uh, both the study eyes and the fellow eyes of these patients had undergone prior anti-VEGF-A therapy of six prior injections, so they were matched for that prior treatment history. And these bilateral disease patients uh, represent um, an inpatient comparison that we're able to make between study eyes treated with the combination, as well as the fellow eyes treated only with um, a selective VEGF-A inhibitor. At week 12 in this cohort of bilateral um, disease patients, study eyes that received the combination experienced a mean gain in visual acuity of 10 letters at week 12 compared to 2.6 letters in the fellow eyes treated with VEGF-A monotherapy alone. 
Similarly, we saw a marked reduction in retinal thickness in the study eyes treated with the combination of um, 90 microns and the monotherapy group that had very little um, reduction in retinal thickness. And the proportion of patients that had a 50% reduction in excess foveal thickness was also greater in the combination study eyes compared to the monotherapy treated fallow eyes. So we're very excited about the outcomes of the phase 1B trial. We recognise that it's nine patients, but we do believe in combination, in, together with the data we've generated to date with this drug, that it's a very um, compelling uh, molecule to be moving forward in clinical development, and we're currently recruiting patients into our phase 2A randomised controlled uh, study in persistent DME. So to summarise, we have a drug which is a selective inhibitor of Regif C and D. We've generated safety data uh, in combination both with ranibizumab and aflibercept. It's very well tolerated. We've shown a dose response in uh, visual acuity gains in persistent DME, suggesting also that pan-VEGF uh, inhibition combination treatment in this setting of the VEGF uh, pathway may offer benefits over selective inhibition of VEGF alone. And our two clinical trials are a phase 2A trial in DME expected to read out early in, uh, late in 2019, and the 2B trial expected to read out early in 2020. Thank you very much for your attention. Mm -hmm.